Thanks very much uh, for the opportunity. And I think some of the slides uh, I would show here are actually repeat of uh, the slides that I showed in 2019. And then 2020 pandemic happened and we couldn't progress much. But we have made quite a lot of progress since the start of this year and, and late last year. Um, and so I'm Ankur Mutreja. I'm based at the University of Cambridge um, as a faculty. And uh, I would really want to showcase to you what cholera detection is and how we should think about moving from rapid diagnostic or rapid detection, as we call it, uh, to rapid detection and confirmatory test. Because we need to get there, otherwise we end up losing quite a lot of time after detecting cholera cases and then sending the samples to the reference lab, waiting for the results to be communicated. So I think we need to sort of take this giant leap uh, from, from detection test to the detection and confirmatory test on the site, in the field, at the source. Um, before I proceed, I'd like to thank all the project partners. It's been a mammoth uh, initiative with uh, sites from India and Africa involved. Um, several institutions from within the University of Cambridge, including uh, Institute for Manufacturing, as you would see, uh, who have designed uh, a kit uh, which would be suitable for, for portable handling and shockproof, waterproof and everything. So we're giving this quite a lot of thought before it comes out to the field. and. I've been taking feedback from some of you here on the prototype that I have, and I'll approach some, some more of you uh, later today. As I said, rapid detection test or rapid detection confirmatory test, I think we have a choice now. Um, the process of cholera detection at the moment is you have acute watery diarrhea suspected of cholera case uh, somewhere. Um, you do the RDT testing, you take that sample, you send it to the reference lab, and from there, reporting takes place. The process in the way we see it uh, should be, RDT testing should be done at the source. There should be on-site confirmation at the source itself using field-adapted molecular assays. It shouldn't be rocket science anymore. We've gone through COVID pandemic, and qPCR machines are all over the place now. You could do PCR or qPCR pretty much everywhere these days. The key to everything uh, is really understanding the pathogen. This is the, the sort of fundamental of our approach. Uh, and uh, we actually thought that you could go further from genus to species to lineage. Uh, people have been diagnosing by PCR, but very much at the species level. What we went down to was the lineage level because we had quite a lot of data on the, the genomics of cholera highlighting what is seventh pandemic and what is non-seventh pandemic cholera. And mind you, when we talk of cholera eradication plan, we don't talk of really cholera eradication. We talk of eradication of the seventh pandemic of cholera because you cannot eradicate cholera. It's an environmental bug. It is important to find out uh, the lineage information because only then you can tell whether it's the seventh pandemic cholera that you're treating or it's the environmental problem, which is probably not worth uh, paying too much attention to. Then there are other factors uh, that went into our thought process. What should be the sensitivity and specificity? Here we have a very uh, simple PCR test, very similar to what you would run in a reference laboratory, but uh, adapted for field usage. So specificity for us, it's really 100%. Sensitivity should be as high as possible. Uh, we are currently doing those tests in, in, in both Africa and India. Actionable outcome should be really one test confirming or rejecting the disease instead of one test detecting and then a reference laboratory further confirming the disease. There should be no need for further culture confirmation. You could do culture confirmation if you like, but ideally action should come out of the test itself on the field side. Reliable results should be produced uh, and should be easy to communicate uh, to the public health agency for action. And uh, it should advise the vaccine program or, or vaccine drive. If you know that it's the seventh pandemic strain that you've identified, you can really feed that data into the vaccination programs. The cost is often a, a, a bottleneck. So we are working towards a cost that should be as low as possible. Speed of the test is often also uh, something that people talk about, and so therefore we are working on a test that would give you an actionable result within a couple of hours instead of waiting for 24 to 48 hours before hearing the result from the reference lab. 
And the speed of data communication is also very, very important. I think that uh, I've been saying repeatedly. Portability and deployability, you can reuse all of these parameters. It should be easy to stockpile. I know that you know, Gavi and others are very interested in stockpiling diagnostics. Should be easy to deploy on an urgent basis. It should have reasonable shelf life in case there is a, a gap in the cholera outbreak season. It should be therefore thermostable. Uh, uh, just to use an ex as an example, uh, you know, it should be used by the primary healthcare centers or it could actually be deployed directly in the field settings. It should have alignment with the surveillance activities. A lot of work uh, we've heard over the last couple of days on the surveillance front. A lot of work we've heard on the WASH front and the OCV front. It should all align very, very well with the WASH and vaccination programs as well. And don't forget the AC power requirement also should be alleviated. So we've worked on a solution that, that would use uh, battery. Minimum skill set should be required. It should be easy to follow SOP included uh, with the kit. And what we're also planning is providing video-based uh, guidance with the kit. And disposal of kits, uh, is, it's very important because you don't want to see it another cholera outbreak just because you've disposed things incorrectly. Therefore, um, there should be easy diffusal. I'd just like to highlight how the current uh, process of rapid detection test looks like. You have a sample, you enrich it with alkaline pepton water, you either use or not use developing buffer, and then dip, dip the antibody dipstick like Crystal VC. You record the result, you then take that as an indication, you send it back to the reference lab for culture slash or and or PCR confirmation, and then the public health action is planned. All of this I have put a very conservative number of 24 to 48 hours. Andrew and, and colleagues from Congo confirmed that it can actually take up to a week sometimes. The process that we uh, are working towards is really you have the sample, you put it in the PCR machine with a buffer that we have customized, uh, and then you develop the reaction, you put the dipstick in the reaction. The only difference is this dipstick is a molecular dipstick. Essentially, what you're seeing on the dipstick is the bands that you would otherwise see on a gel as you were running a PCR in, in the laboratory. And so therefore, the, the result that you have is really actionable result that anybody could use to, to, to plan their next move. So really, sample to actionable result, again, in, in less than four hours. How we've achieved it uh, is by replacing a traditional PCR machine uh, and also by replacing uh, the gel detection system with these two very smart uh, machines. Uh, one is a mini PCR machine, which has also been tested by NASA on the International Space Station, so it works beautifully and it's portable. And we've replaced the gel system with molecular detection strips. So instead of really running the gel, which is a cumbersome process, you can actually see the bands on the, on the stick. So, so the, the movement from rapid sticks to these molecular sticks, it's not going to be a completely new thing for the technician who has been using the rapid uh, detection sticks like Crystal VC. We've also been working on a portable kit case uh, to ensure that it is waterproof, shockproof, all sorts of things. It should be wipeable, it shouldn't have any pores if there is any spillage of cholera stool sample onto the kit and so on. And, and quite a lot of thought process is going into that. And that kit will contain a battery pack, a mobile phone to run the, the machine, Ideally, in future, when we get more funds, we would have an app on the phone that would record the result automatically from the bands so that there is error avoidance uh, by, by subjects uh, who, are, who, are taking, uh, uh, who are noting down the results. And also, these mobile phones could be used directly to communicate the data if there is internet present, or as soon as these mobile phones will hit the internet, they would communicate the data directly to the reference. Uh, reference database, wherever you want it. So we started with optimizing everything on the gel. We have primarily focused on three markers. One is pandemic cholera detection, O1 cholera detection, and toxigenic cholera detection. With, with these three markers, you can really have very solid information on whether it, this, this particular outbreak or this particular scenario is worth taking an action or not. Otherwise, you might be taking an action on an outbreak or, or a potential outbreak, but it may actually be just a, a, an environmental um, seed. 
we have tested the utility of these uh, 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 dipsticks uh, with various mixtures. We mixed, mixed Oven Eltor with Classical. We mixed Oven with O139, Eltor, Classical, all kinds of mixtures we've tested. And we've very beautifully uh, been seeing that, that specificity and sensitivity, everything is nicely maintained. I'd just like to finish with this slide, and I'll be happy to take you know, more questions later or, or further one-on-one -on -one discussions, just in interest of time. Finishing here, this is something we have been discussing as part of GTFCC for quite a few years now, desired versus acceptable, so essentially preferred product characteristics to the target product profile. Um, and the desired is early detection, declaration, and monitoring of outbreak without need for cholera confirmation. So first in intention test uh, to be used on a predefined number of cholera suspect cases should be this desired test. And, and this could really only be achieved through molecular testing. I'd just like to finish by thanking uh, very, very generous funders uh, of this project, including DBT from India, MRC, uh, NIHR, Cambridge University, and Wellcome Trust. Thanks very much. Thank you.